Nikki Taylor, the face of the moment, takes you inside the high stakes world of high fashion, gives you a glimpse of what makes her such a supermodel. I think I represent women. I mean, women have hips and boobs and, you know, they're women. She's a model mom in real life who still looks this good after having twins. How much weight did you gain? Uh, 70 pounds. 70 pounds? Yeah. And tonight, with Nancy Collins, Nikki Taylor talks for the first time about the shocking death of her teenage sister, who was following in her footsteps. There's not one day that goes by where I don't think of her or talk to her. From a quiet... On life, love, and the loss of her teenage sister. People um, thought it, it was a drug thing. But it was no, there was no. Yeah, no. I mean, she's the healthiest person I've ever known. But first, she's got the face that launched a thousand magazine covers. Supermodel Nikki Taylor shares new information about the sudden death of the sister who was following in her high fashion footsteps. And later, four million dollars a year. Believe me, we are talking about a face that will be familiar. But you may never have heard this woman speak because she rarely gives interviews. For the first time, supermodel Nikki Taylor talks to Nancy Collins about the high-voltage world of high fashion, which was shaken two years ago by the sudden death of a promising young model, her younger sister. She is finally ready to speak about the devastating loss and about the joy and sorrow of life on the runway. She's one of the most beautiful women in the world. At just 22, Nikki Taylor is also one of the top supermodels in the business. She sells you CoverGirl makeup, Liz Claiborne clothes. Last year, she was on the cover of more magazines than any other model, six in one month alone. She seems to have everything, even twin boys. But in 22 years, she's already lost a lot. You've really had your 30s in your teens. <laughs> All the things that a woman... I feel 50, actually. <laughs> because of all the life experience? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hopefully from here on out it'll be a smooth ride because I feel like I've been through it all. <laughs> Nikki Taylor grew up near Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where she still lives. The product of a close-knit family, daughter of a highway patrolman and a homemaker, she and her two sisters, Chrissy and Joelle, were inseparable. Best friends. Especially uh, me and Chrissy, we were always, you know, close. We shared the same room, everything. We did. Clothes. Uh, we had such a good time. Just did everything together. Like twins? Yeah. Describe Chrissy for me. Who was Chrissy? Uh, we look a lot alike, but she was also taller than I was. So she was probably... Beautiful. Like, incredible body. Like, all the boys were like, who's that? Who's this? That's my little sister. Leave her alone. She was always a better talker than I was and always, you know, said what was on her mind and told it like it was and, you know, didn't let people walk all over me. And me, I'd be af I was always the one that was afraid to speak up. Did you think when you were a little girl that you were pretty? I was different more than I was pretty because I was always taller than everybody else and I always got, you know, oh, daddy long legs or giraffe or something. <laughs> But, um, no, I was a tomboy. That is until the day Nikki's mother took these pictures around to local modeling agencies. Nikki was just 13 years old, but she instantly got work. Do you remember your first fashion show, like big time fashion show? I was 14 and I was in Paris at Terry Mugler. And I got these like five inch heels and it was, uh, I was like, gosh, I hope I don't fall. I hope I don't fall. <laughs> She did, and her next Moogler show would become one of her most famous runway appearances. Basically, it was just like dress up. It was like a play, almost. Also at 14, she got her first cover, and even helped launch the modeling career of her sister Chrissy. By 15, she was the youngest model ever to sign a major cosmetics contract for L'Oreal, and the youngest face ever to land on the cover of Vogue, and all while still in high school. 
And did you even read Vogue at the time? Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't even have a subscription to a magazine. <laughs> no beauty magazine. No beauty magazine. <laughs> so all those covers, you don't even bother to look through the magazine? No, my mom keeps some. That's to date more than 250 magazine covers. Heady stuff. But Nikki always knew what the job was all about. You sell mm -hmm. products, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's your job. That's my job. Mm -hmm. And tell me why, why do you think you sell products? I think of it more as being a chameleon. And that's why, you know, they call us supermodels. My look is more like just, you know, American and clean and, you know, just fresh. I think I represent women. I mean, women have hips and boobs and, you know, they're women. Nikki Taylor's look is in fact a perfect antidote to the recent vacant fashion look critics call heroin chic. I was never really attracted to it myself. I don't see how it sells clothes or perfume or makeup or anything like that. How have you avoided the traps of the sort of modeling, supermodel world that we read about, the drugs and the nightlife and... It's my parents. Really? That's how my parents just protected me from all that. They always traveled with yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Until I was 18. At 18, she graduated and eloped with Matt Martinez, a 24-year-old assistant coach of the Miami Hooters, an arena football team. I was um, 18. You know, I thought I was in love, um, ready to have kids. It's interesting because there's so many young girls out there who adore you, look up to you. And what would you tell them about getting married young? You have to give a relationship time. Mm -hmm. And only time can tell whether, you know, it's going to work. And, Definitely, like, spend at least, you know, four seasons with somebody that you love and, you know, so you could see how their different moods are. And um, Don't rush into it. You have all the time in the world, really. That's uh -huh. what I would... How long did you know Matt before you got married? <laughs> Three months. <laughs> in December 1994, when Nikki was 19, she and Matt had twin boys, Jake and Hunter. Now, how much weight did you gain when you were pregnant? Uh, 70 pounds. 70 pounds? Yeah. I was pretty big. I was like 200 and something. So your normal weight is what? Yeah. Um, 130. Did you immediately take to mothering? Yeah. The, you know what the scariest thing was is when they let you take your baby home. We're going down the elevator and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're going to just let us take them home. <laughs> a lot of women in your position being a top model would not have had babies. You know, it could have been, they could have considered that a career negative. I wanted to have kids since I was 16 and, um, and I was prepared. You know, I've done pretty much everything. I've traveled, I've made some money, and I wanted to have them young and grow up with them. Four months later, those 70 pounds had melted off, and Nikki was back, parading through the fall fashion shows. The teenage Chrissy was also coming into her own as a model. Neither could imagine that this spring 1995 runway show would be one of Chrissy's last. Shocked and surprised, those are the reactions tonight to the death of 17-year-old Chrissy Taylor. In the early morning hours of July 2nd, 1995, Nikki Taylor stopped by her parents' home to pick up her car. She found her sister collapsed on the floor. Less than 90 minutes later, Chrissy Taylor was pronounced dead. She was 17 years old. Well, Nikki, how did you deal with that? Mm, it was not easy. It was very hard. And um, you, you never know, I mean, really, I mean, losing a best friend, not only blood, but a best friend, I mean, <laughs> she's just not here anymore, I think. That's the biggest part. I can't call her, ask her for advice. Yeah. Every day, it's, I, I always think about her and I'm constantly, you know, why? Why Chrissy Taylor died was a mystery. The medical examiner put the cause of death as bronchial asthma. She'd been using an over-the-counter asthma inhaler for occasional shortness of breath, but had never been officially diagnosed as asthmatic. The biggest thing is that people um, thought it, ha it was a drug thing, you know. But it was no, there was no. Yeah, no. I mean, she's the healthiest person I've ever known. 
Mm. So it was totally yeah. non-drug related. Yeah, because we didn't answer to the press. We were like, leave us alone, you know, and they just came up with their own stories. Desperate for answers about the loss of their daughter, the Taylor family turned to a cardiologist. He concluded that Chrissy died of a rare heart disease called right ventricular dysplasia that can cause sudden death in adolescents and young adults. The family now believes that this was the primary cause of Chrissy Taylor's death. But you didn't work directly after Chrissy's death, right? You took some time mm, off. Yeah. Mm. And then it was like time to go back to work, keep myself busy, and, you know, kept my mind on my boys and work, boys, work. But, uh, Did you ever want to give up? Oh, yeah, plenty of times. But they were all, you know, I was like, no, wait, you know, for Jake and Hunter's sake, you know. You know, I always had to, I looked at them and I was like, man, I'm stronger than this and we're going to get through this and, you know, move on. I don't know. It's, it's really, it was her time to, you know, move on, I think. And you really believe that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. She did what she had to do. That's how I look at it now. That's why it's, uh, I can talk about it now. And there's not one day that goes by where I don't think of her or talk to her. How do you talk to her? Just uh, when I'm by myself or just walking or if I think there was a sign or something that she's, she's, she's always around me. I know she's always around me. Shortly following Chrissy's death, Nikki faced another jolt. Her marriage fell apart. The couple separated, then divorced last August. There was differences. But, you know, now we're separated, um, trying to be friends. Um, we're going to be grandparents together. So we have to make the best for Jake and Hunter. I'm lucky because I have that financial stability and I can raise my kids with or without a husband. Everything that I've been through, everything's a learning experience. It's made me a stronger person, uh -huh. definitely. I've never felt so in control in my life and it feels so good. <laughs> so what does the future hold for Nikki Taylor? She says she's going to keep modeling until people get sick of her. Not likely. But she says she would be willing to give it up and have a few more children and just be a mom.